Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about client presentations. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about what slides you should be including within your client presentations to help your clients really see the full picture and just feel excited and motivated and ready to move forward on the project. Now, I'm also going to create a secondary video that will show you how you can actually build out all of your uh, client slides using the mood board tool within design files. So keep an eye out for that within the video tutorial library, because what you can do with it is you can build out all of your branded slides and you can save them as templates, which means that you can reuse them for future projects. So it's going to save you a ton of time and it's going to give you that same beautiful, polished, branded, cohesive look for all future projects. But let's go ahead for this video, we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk a little bit about what slides you should be including within any client presentation. Now, the number one slide that you're going to start with is your cover slide and your cover slide really doesn't have to have that much information on it at all. It just has to have a nice professional look to it. And there's a few ways that you could go about this. You can see here for mine, I've basically set it up so that the vast majority of it is just a large visual image just to create some interest. And if you've got any great uh, images in your portfolio that you could use, then you could do the same thing. Below that, I've basically included what the name of the project is. And if this was a project that's specifically going to be addressing one room, then you could include that. And over here, this is where I would include my logo. So I've basically just got a bit of a filler here, but you would just include your actual logo. Now, if you don't have any great images that you can include within your uh, cover slide to begin with, that's not a problem. You could just go for a nice solid color and then maybe just kind of have the project name right up in the center here, nice and large. And then you could include some of your uh, business details. So you might want to include your business name and your website, your phone number and your logo. But you can always have a look online for different cover slide layouts and see which one best suits you. Now, the next slide that I've got in here is the table of contents. All of these were created using the mood board tools um, within design files, but having a table of contents is great because if you've got a large presentation that you're going through, what's nice about this is that it's basically going to set you up for success because it's giving you a path that you can follow to make sure that you are not forgetting anything and you're going to be able to just kind of confidently walk through the project. It also makes it easy for the client as well. So if you wanted to say to them, you know, hey, let's jump to page five, then they can easily do that and see that, okay, we're going to start talking about the elevations. Now, actually, before I even go into the next slide here, um, I guess I another thing that I should probably note here is that there's different ways that you can present this to your client as well. So obviously, if you wanted to present face to face to them, you could print out your presentation. You could also just load it up on your laptop so that you can go through it with your client as you sit down on the sofa. You could do a Zoom meeting with them where you share your screen and make your way through the slides. There's different ways that you can approach it. So you can just pick the, the way that kind of best suits you and the type of project that you're taking on. Now, directly after the table of contents, I like to kickstart the, uh, the presentation on a high note. Whenever I'm doing any sort of presentation, it should start on a high, a high note and it should end on a high note. And then we're going to sandwich all of the other content that we need to get through somewhere in between. So for me, kickstarting with the concept board, or if you prefer to do the full room mockups, um, that would be a great slide to bring directly after the table of contents, because we want to get the client excited and dreaming about their space and really eager to move forward. And one of the best ways to do that is to show them all of the great products that you're recommending for their space. Now, alternatively, you could choose to lead in with your floor plan so that you can speak a little bit about the overall layout and how you see this whole space coming together and then follow that with the mood board. That would be totally fine as well. But just having these two slides right out the gate will help you get your client excited about the project and then you can move forward with talking about other aspects of it. Beyond the mood board and the floor plan slide, the next slide that I like to include is the material and finishes slide. And if I'm being totally honest with you, what I love about this is just how beautiful it is. It just looks so clean and professional, and it's nice to see all the different textures and finishes that are going to be included within the space. And you can see here that I've included labels underneath each one. So it kind of helps the client get a sense for where all of these textures and finishes are going to be included within the space. You can totally do a different layout if you prefer. I just like the cleanness of this, but if you like the idea of doing more of a collage um, 
material and finishes board, then you could totally do that as well. Now, after we've done that, if you've got any drawings of the uh, project, so if you've got elevation drawings or if you've got millwork drawings, those would be the next slides that you might want to consider including within this presentation. So you can really help your clients start to visualize how all of this is gonna start to come together. And if you've got these elevation drawings or millwork drawings, you can easily upload those into the mood board software so that you can drag them out and build them into your branded templates. So if I just zoom out here, you can see that I've got my branded template. And what I did here is in my library, I jumped over to my assets and I uploaded images of the elevations. I also uploaded images of the millwork and I dragged that out and I included it within the actual branded template that I had set up. So when I save that, it means that I'm going to be able to share that as a slide within my client presentation. So you can do the same thing. Beyond the um, drawings that you have, another one that you might want to include within your client presentation is a lighting plan. Now, this is by no means a detailed lighting plan that I would share with a contractor. This is a simplified lighting plan that I'm just sharing with my client to give them a sense of the different types of lighting options that we're gonna include within their space. And what I did here is I actually just uploaded an image of my floor plan. Let me go into the editor here. You can see here that I also use the text tool to include a legend of the different types of lighting options we're gonna include within the space. And each of these little colored squares, these are just paint swatches that I scaled down. And then I duplicated that and placed it on the floor plan to indicate where each of these uh, lighting options are gonna show within the plan. So that's definitely something that you can also consider doing for your client presentations. And here, just because I had extra space, I just added in some of the images of the actual products so my client could get a sense for how all of these are gonna work together. Now, because I'm getting towards the end of my presentation, I want to kind of close this out on a high note. So this is where I would include any of the rendering images that I have created for this project. And if you've been using the Design Files 3D Floor Planner, you can literally copy and paste rendering images into any of the mood boards that you create within the mood board software. And the nice thing about doing that is that it means that you can add your rendered images to your branded templates. So everything has that same cohesive look instead of it just being the rendering without that template, without that template and without all of your branding added in. So you could go ahead and you could include just one slide for a rendering, or if you wanted to, you could actually include multiple and just have one large render per slide so that your client can really start to see how everything is gonna start coming together for the space and they can get excited about what's to come. Now the last two slides that I would include, we wanna make sure that we're setting expectations for your client. So you might want to include a project timeline. In this case, I've just indicated the various stages that we'll be going through for this particular project. And I'm also indicating kind of like an average time frame for how long we can expect these stages to take. So it's a great way to just kind of you know, get your client excited about the project, but then let's get into reality here. Here's what we're gonna to have to do to get there. And you just kind of wanna make sure that your client understands this is the overall timeline. And if you have projects where you don't necessarily have to go through all of these stages, maybe you're just going through a few of them, then you can just pair it back and you can include only the stages that you need. And then the last slide that we're gonna end on here is the budget recommendation slide. So we've talked about everything within the project. We've gotten the client excited about the finishes, showing them the renderings, showing them elevations and millwork drawings. And what we really need to do now is we've got to get a consensus on the budget. So having a budget recommendation slide where you're explaining to them, here's what we can expect to spend on each of these different categories will help them start to wrap their brains around, okay, I really like what's been presented to me here and now I'm getting a sense for how the costs are getting broken down. So this is just kind of like, it's basically recommendations. It doesn't have to be exact. You just wanna give them a sense for the overall pricing. And then of course, if they are in agreement and ready to move forward, then you can start following up with detailed invoices and quotes based on the specific items and the time that's gonna be spent. Um, but essentially, those are the slides that I would include within a client presentation. 
And if you have any questions about anything that we've discussed within this video, then by all means, reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help. And on another note, if you feel like there are other slides that you think would be a great addition to this, then feel free to let us know. We're always happy to learn from other designers. Um, and it just kind of helps us all get better at these presentations when we share information. But yeah, if you've got any questions about it, feel free to reach out to us. Keep an eye out in the video tutorial page for the secondary video that will show you how you can create all of these branded slides using the mood board software and how you can save them as templates. And other than that, I'm just going to say thanks so much for watching.